tiếng Anh cao cấp. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Dawn of globalization. Our entering the WTO has quickened its steps. We've become the manufacturing powerhouse of the whole world. What will follow? Exploitation, economic invasion, confrontation, hostility? Not really, provided that we handle the current situation wisely. Confucius said, the gentleman is versed in what is moral. The small man is versed in what is profitable. For the sake of economic reconstruction, however, we are chasing big bugs and materialism is now the name of the game. A rapid growth in GDP is accompanied by worrying moral negligence. Loyalty, sincerity, modesty and filial piety might be cadences of the past. We have actually been losing our traditions not because of direct threats or attacks from others. Globalization is only a catalyst. You may be buying McDonald's franchise and making a big fortune, but you don't know at the same time you're not only changing your kid's palate, but also teaching your families not to cook and becoming slack in our time-honored culinary art. There's no escaping it. Globalization is marked by sophisticated advanced technology and cheap accessible communication methods. But ever since the May 4th movement, isn't it what we've been clamoring for? But what we do not realize is that coming from the West is more than just Mr. Democracy and Science. Mr. Individualism has also steadily crept in. Being influenced by it, we are becoming more self-centered and selfish. Paradoxically, however, Our traditional culture and values teach us, to a certain extent, to start with individualism. How can you rule a country, administer a government, or even maintain a family without being able to manage yourself? So globalization is a golden opportunity for self-evaluation. It's outrageously arrogant to think that we are the best in the world. Even if we are, we still have to be humble. This is the Chinese way. And let me talk about uh, my experience in my hometown, Hong Kong, and other two international examples. British colonial rule turned Hong Kong into a multicultural metropolis basking in Chinese and Western cultures. Our preeminent need now is to find further sustenance from our mother culture to bolster a stronger local identity. Our government, so, adopted an expeditious language policy to enforce Cantonese as the medium of instruction in secondary school, and Putonghua is expected to take its place in long term. And for Japan, you see, her successful Meiji modernization conserved her traditional values and at the same time assimilating Western cultures. The French, on the other hand, who are notoriously proud of their, you know, uh, national ethnic endowments are trying with all their might to fan of Americanism brought about by globalization. And let's face it, there's more than one way to skin a cat. My proposition, my proposition is to adopt a more proactive approach. We can serve the ball. For McDonaldization, we can offer dim summization. To counter Disneyland, how about a Chinese opera theme park? Don't forget we're now the major play in the new world order. Zhang Yimou, Ken Zhang Zhang, Li An, John Wu and Jackie Chan have already made their presence felt in world cinemas. Every day, in every corner of the world, non-Chinese people are practicing Tai Chi and Kung Fu. Sinology is a hot topic in major universities and countless examples. Endowed with such excellent traditions spanning more than 5,000 years, we have abundant cultural resources to offer. If we have learned a thing or two from our British friends in brand naming theirs as cultural creative industry, we can export ours to the entire world. So a new re-engineered cultural policy is the answer. Finally, let's not forget we, university student, is are well educated to become the model for all to emulate. It's our responsibility to uphold our traditional values. 
to return to Confucius. A righteous man would never give up his righteousness for survival, but die for righteousness. This is no easy task, but it's our challenging, glorious fate. Thank you. Well, I get to ask another marriage kind of a question. The divorce rate in China is increasing alarmingly in recent years. Children and divorced families are usually having more problems growing up. In your view, what impact do you think divorce may have on children, and how to deal with it? Like the royal wedding. The wedding ceremony. It might be the best of time, because two mature people with special connection, sharing the same values, are finally coming together, form a new family, and they're going to have kids. What a picture! On the other hand, it might be the worst of times if they're going to divorce. And a lot of problems would be generated, not only affecting them, but kids. And I am one of them. So I think it's a very shocking question for me, but I think I am going to share my experience to all of you because I am now here. You know, looking retrospectively for my past twenty years, I have a lot of experience. To be a kid or be a children or child from a divorced family, you know, they are just like、uh, my. I heard my father say or my mother, you know, the conversation just like, "He's not your kid.、Uh, he's not my kid. It's yours." And my mother answered, "Well, he's yours, not mine." And they ended up quarreling. You know my feeling, anyway. So I think、uh, as A kid like this,、uh, I encounter a lot of problem, and I can say the most important one, or severe one, is to is that、uh, lack of family care. I think,、uh, you know, I think I'm qualified enough to speak of this topic, and、uh, you know, a kid like this is no, not going to get、uh, enough care from family. You know, when I was、uh, before the night of my first day. Date with a girl, you know. My first date before I went to primary school, secondary school. I'm very, always very worried and anxious, and I want to consult someone for their advice. But no one. I could not turn to anyone. This is the biggest problem, I think,、uh, because of time constraints.、Uh, I have a lot of experiences, but I can't、uh, tell you <laughs> here because of time constraints. But I am so proud to be here. That I turn out to be a good guy anyway, because you know I'm one of the contestants, 60 contestants from all over mainland here, and、uh, I'm a university student. Because I, when I encounter problems, I turn to my good teachers, my peers, my social workers. I think there's a lot of problem, and uh, you know. Uh, Kids from divorced family is going to be、uh, kind of have some kind of feeling of inferiority. They don't like to communicate with other people. They appear to be cool or arrogant, but there's deep inside their heart is a sign of kind of inferiority sometimes. So I think、uh, the most important thing is to be. If you're one of the divorced student、uh, kids, you have to be more. Right to communicate with others, and you know, I have, I had, I, I think I had good teachers in my secondary schools. If I encounter problems, I just turn to her, and she solved a lot of problems of mine. And you know, there was always temptation in my early life. You know, I always hang out with、uh, kids or other guys from、uh, divorced families, and one day told me, "Why not join a triad gang or something? We can get money, we can get girls, or even drugs." Wow, it's kind of tempting to a kid of、uh, 15 or 16 years old. But you know, I respect my teacher that much, so I ask her, and she told me all the consequences of being like that. So finally, I know, and I'm 
become a good guy here. I think the most important thing is to, you know, uh, commu uh, join, you know, the cooperation of schools, governments, and uh, you people. You know, we are common people, just like many uh, contestants stated that uh, we are born equal. We are nothing in, you know, in a physical sense or a mental sense, we are equal. So our government should increase the number of social workers in our schools. I think it's very important. We can turn to them if I encounter problems. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your personal yes. experience with yes. us. Um, I would like to ask you a creative question. What do you think a society will look like if divorce is disallowed? Wow, what a picture again. And I think, uh, we know, every, if it's like that, there must be pros and cons. But I think uh, um, it's more kind of like an ancient world, Asian, ancient society, like uh, a thousand or two thousand years ago in some sense. Because, uh, you know, I think divorce is kind of uh, freedom is freedom. I think I treasure freedom very much, but it is prohibited. And I don't think there's any contradiction to our human rights or laws or something. But at the same time, it's. Uh, I think it's Norway. It's not always bad to be a kid coming from you know growing up in a divorce family. You may ask. Uh, I may be. You know, I'm kind of supporting divorce. It's quite contradicting to my identity. But I think I turned out to be very self-independent. It's no, not always bad to grow up in a divorced family. And I think the picture would be quite uh, blurred. I don't know. We have to secure human rights and freedom. And I think it's not going to be a good world with, uh, you know, they don't like each other and they just saying, well, maybe they are sleeping on the same bed or uh, living in the same apartment, but there might be confrontation, hostility, oh, privacy invasion are kind of, a lot of problems would be generated. And I think this is not wise to, you know, to have divorce uh, prohibited or something like this. Thank you. Ngoại ngữ chuyên ngành.com